Hey everyone, today's video is a time lapse of a coding challenge that I undertook, which involved recreating this pricing component from Font Awesome's website purely by eyeballing all of the HTML and CSS. Um, so I'm not actually allowed to look at any of the HTML and CSS that they use on their website. The only time you'll see me looking at the CSS is if I really can't figure out what color they've used for a certain piece of text or a certain section within the pricing component. But other than that, everything needs to be eyeballed. Throughout this video, you'll also see my thought process and how I generally approach each section as well. Oh, and by the way, if you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Addy. I am 25 years old and I am a mechatronics and a software engineer. I created this channel earlier on this year to explore topics like full stack web application development, artificial intelligence, creative coding, and perhaps even some robotics down the line. So if any of these topics sound interesting to you and you'd like to be a part of my journey with this channel, then consider hitting that subscribe button. So with that out of the way, let's jump right into it. So I started off by creating a basic React application just by running create React app. Um, I didn't actually go with any custom setup with Webpack or anything of the sort because my intention with this project was to just develop a single component called a pricing component, which can eventually just be copy and pasted into any other project that I use in the future. So after running create react app, I just went about and cleared out all of the files that I didn't need and just modified the index.js file to essentially render a component um, that I define over here. So the idea here is that my application renders this pricing component onto the screen. Now that just consists of both of the pricing cards but the pricing component is wrapped by this wrapper, which is responsible for using Flexbox to center it in the middle of the screen. One of the questions that some of you might be having is why didn't I actually define wrapper within the pricing component, right? And that's simply because the pricing component shouldn't really be opinionated about where it's positioned on the screen. Instead, whatever parent component ends up calling it should be responsible for deciding where it will be positioned. So once I was done with this setup, I was ready to start implementing the pricing component. I started off by creating two divs, which would act like the container for each of these two pricing cards. Um, so for this part, you just see me trying to figure out the style for these two divs. Um, that's stuff like the border radius, the spacing between them, the width and height, um, and the box shadow. And once I got this done, I was ready to start implementing this top section on the pricing component, which I ended up calling the header. So implementing the header was relatively straightforward and mainly involved adding font awesome icon to the project as well as defining a flex container that stacks its children in a column. And from there, it was just a matter of deciding on the right font size, font weight and style for the header. Once I was done with implementing the header, I moved on to implementing the next section that I call the special info section. Now that's just this section over here that indicates whether or not Font Awesome 6 is included uh, for the selected price. Now I thought implementing this part would be quite straightforward, um, but it turned out to be a bit more interesting. And that's primarily because the standard section over here actually allows you to click on this carrot right icon, which then renders this additional list of features that are included within Font Awesome version 6 um, and features that will be included in the future as well. But anyways, the general approach that I ended up taking for this section was to just use CSS to position the icon um, as well as the text that indicates whether or not Font Awesome 6 is included with this particular plan. And I also ended up using use state for the standard section 
um, so that I could detect whether or not a user clicks on the carrot right icon. And if they do, replace the carrot right icon with a carrot down icon and render all of the additional features that will be included with Font Awesome 6. Once I was done with the special info section, I moved on to the next section, which just outlines all of the features included with the free and standard versions of Font Awesome. So the approach for this was relatively straightforward. I essentially just wrapped the entire section with an unordered list. Each item within the unordered list simply comprised of a font awesome icon and some text which elaborates on what's included with the selected plan. Obviously I had to figure out the font size for this section and the spacing between each list item, but that was just a matter of some trial and error. If you've got a keen eye, You'll notice that for this section, I'm only using two types of Font Awesome icons, the check mark and the times icon. Um, but if you look at the one on the right, which is what they have on Font Awesome's website, you see that they use some fancy icons over there. Um, I tried looking into using these icons, but I found out that these icons are actually premium icons, which means that they're not free to use. So for the sake of this coding challenge, I thought it was more than sufficient to just use the free icons because the approach doesn't really change much whether or not you subscribe to the premium version of Font Awesome. The last thing that was left to do was to work on the footer, which has the call to action buttons for both the free and standard sections. I started off by just simply creating a div um, and the div would have a custom background color if it belonged to the standard section. I also added some border top to the divs for both the standard and the free section. Once I finished styling these divs, I added anchor tags as their children. And those are just the buttons that you see in the footer section. So the anchor tags actually had quite a bit of styling added to them, um, which was just to make it look like the button. So that's a custom width, a custom height, some box shadow, some border all around the box, custom border colors, and so on. But once I finished working on that, the last thing that was left was for me to just add the icon as well as the text. Um, so the icon would either be a rocket or a gaming controller and the text would just say start for free or GoPro with standard. At this point, everything was pretty much done. So I just went around cleaning up the code a bit as well as making sure that all the elements within each of the pricing cards are aligned. Um, so that's making sure there's consistent spacing between icons and text, making sure that icons that are part of an unordered list are aligned correctly below each other and so on. But after a while, I was finally done and this is the final product. So by now, some of you are probably noticing that there are a few subtle differences between what I've made and what Font Awesome Icon has. So the first obvious one is that the fonts are a bit off, right? And that's just because while I was setting up the project and looking for fonts to include, I realized that this website over here actually uses a premium font. And so instead of paying for a font, I decided to just use the fallback font that they use for my application. 
And that is also why the font size in some places is slightly different and the font weight also differs in some places, but that's okay. The next thing that I already spoke about before was how some of the icons are different, um, including the rocket and the game control over here. That's because these guys on the right are actually all premium icons. I also didn't go ahead and implement this tooltip that you see over here because that is a little bit more complicated and I decided to just skip it for this coding challenge. But maybe in the future I'll do a video on how to create these tooltips. But overall, I'm pretty happy with what this looks like and I will stop working on it for now. As always, the code for this will be available on my GitHub repository, which will be linked in the description of this video. If any of you are eager enough to go through the code and suggest some improvements, then please feel free to do so. If you're still with me at this point in the video and you did find this interesting or helpful in any way, then do consider hitting that like button. It really does help promote the video and also helps give me some feedback about how the video is performing in general. If you do have any feedback about what I've done in the video, then feel free to drop a comment down below. But that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.